oh yeah. And then they start jogging. So we start running. So I'm like, we're getting kidnapped here. It's game over. Milner, are you not dead yet? <laughs> Give me my backside, no chance. And Hart is walloped one with a snooker cue. Oh, I'm nervous now. <laughs> is that how you play golf? <laughs> oh my goodness me. Exclusively on Amazon Prime <laughs> Video. Hello everybody, welcome back. I am here in Altrincham to play a little bit of indoor golf and throw a few arrows as well with one of my former England teammates who is, without doubt, one of the most competitive men I have ever met in my life. At club level, he has won absolutely everything there is to win. And at the ripe old age of 36, is still outrunning 99% of Premier League players. I'm looking forward to this one. Hey, how are you, mate? You're right. Good you're okay, you. yeah. I'm good. Looking a million dollars, mate. Thanks. You look fit as a fiddle, right? <laughs> Um, I saw a picture on the inst in Instagram the other day. On the Instagram, I nearly oh said God. that. <laughs> on the Instagram. I saw a picture on the internet the other day. You just put a decent tackle on big Leo Messi, yeah? But Leo didn't like it. He weren't having it, mate. He wanted a bit of beef, basically. What was that story and what did he say to you there? He's so incredible, obviously. For, for me, the, be the, the best ever. And I think, um, you know, if you let players like that have their own way and give them too much respect, they're obviously going to run the game. So. You know, sometimes you just have to let them know you're there and try and knock them out of the stride. And he, he, he didn't like it, obviously, and he was, he was um, giving me a bit in Spanish. But what was it? Come on, what's he saying? Yeah, he was obviously calling me the word for donkey, but also translates as, you know, just goes around kicking people. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, we went yeah. up the tunnel and he was going mad at half time, saying, just because I megged you, just because I megged you a few He's years saying ago. That? Yeah, yeah. Oh, grow up, Leo. Um, Stop giving it the big so one, that, you? To, to be honest, he can say what he wants, can't he? No, he can, he can. I don't care. Of course he can. Of course he can. He no, can I'm not having it, wants. mate. Leo, you don't get to say what you want, please. <laughs> not having it, no chance. So, yeah, I mean, and. Um, it, it turned out nicely in the end, obviously, with what happened in the second leg, so... Right, mate, um, I've got three mini tournaments for you today, okay, yeah? So, first of all, we're going to play three holes, then we're going to do a long drive contest, um, and third and finally, we're going to play some darts, yeah? Perfect. Yeah, I get the impression these things just go straight anyway. Well, you'll find out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Not pure, that. What are you saying about it only going straight? I can't be out of bounds. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. I'm not allowed to tear it up again. What, out of the rough? Yeah. Is that how you play golf? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder when we played at the Grove with England, you're always coming in shooting five over and that. Ooh, just over. I've gone right for it. Bit skinny. Gimme. Give Gimme Give my backside, no chance. I'm 53 foot away, God's sake. Auto finishing. Yeah, yeah. full square. This is a joke. Come on then, the boys. Right, Millie, 20 years, yeah? 20 years. It was the toughest opponent you've come up against so far. Probably when I was at City, one of the first years, Training, you've never seen that like it, mate. It was Nigel de Jong, Vincent Company. Oh. You weren't allowed to dribble around Vinny. If you managed to get around him as good as he was, he'd just hack you. Just pure ego oh, got in the way. That's yeah, it. You, Patrick you're done. Vieira, who was amazing. What a guy, slowing down at that point, though. Yeah. So, again, because <laughs> he's unbelievable, he can't be seeing anyone to get around him. And, so, he's you know, kicking so as you're well. running around, So, he's walloping you. Colo Torre. Wow. I mean, it got physical in training then. We had five asides, and I swear we must have had fights on a on a weekly basis there. It got to the point where like there was paparazzi at the Waiting, training ground. Praying. Yeah, please. but we had the we had these um coverings up so you couldn't see the training pitches. Like a standard thing, a guy walking down the ginnel to get there with his camera and a stepladder. No. To be able to stay over the top, and they'd just be there with cameras waiting for, for the next punch something. up. Yeah, every day. Mario obviously was causing carnage as well. Do you think? Do you think that's probably the biggest difference in your 20 years? The the physicality and the contact and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, when I started my career, you know, I I, I wouldn't say I'm a dirty player. I wouldn't say that. So you you, bit, you yeah. might, but you I thought bit. there's no way of getting sent off. I'll, I'll never try hurt someone. I'll go in and try like know you're there, but fairly. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's important that people don't get hurt, but I think it's important to keep that physicality in the game as well. So I, I think this year the refs are letting more go, which I think I think it's good. James Milner was a liar, by the way. Every <laughs> single player wants to hurt their opponent in a little bit. Just a little bit, all right? Nothing crazy, but they want to hurt them, all right? So you obviously play a bit of golf. Has that always been the case with you in football? Yeah, you're competitive, aren't you? So you want to do some art, and it's always a good social thing, you know, go out with a few of the boys. Is that what you think it is, the fact that you sort of People don't really get to see uh, you can have a bit of a social, like you say. Yeah, I think so. You know, you, you've got to get away from football, aren't you? And yeah. you're surrounded by it non-stop, so four hours on the course. You know, it's nice 
to say like you can't have your phone on you're on the golf course and stuff so yeah, leave me good, alone. It, yeah. you, you know you're just getting away from it and thinking about something else so you're playing off six at the minute who's the best football golfer you played with i think harry kane we played in the golf tournament so he's off scratch isn't he he's uh, off scratch now yeah still as fit as a fiddle like i said at the beginning what do you put it down to? I think obviously we're lucky now. The amount of staff we have at the football club's obviously changed. Said that from the start, but fitness coach is one now. You know, you've maybe got three or four a nutritionists for your food, physios, masseurs. If you need luck and you need probably the desire and the hunger and work rate to, you know, want to be fit. You know, it's like when you're playing in your off season, you you can't really enjoy it because you know you got a kids are playing in the pool or running around and you're like, right, I've got to go and do my session now. And then you're doing a pre-act and they're running around the pool having fun. This is why then... you need to be a goalie, mate. Five o'clock is beer <laughs> o'clock, yeah? That's when the beers come out, okay? Yeah, we don't yeah. wait that long, all right? No. Every single pre-season, we see a picture of James Milner, veins popping, <laughs> <laughs> veins popping everywhere. And you've got the younger kids frigging dying to death behind them whilst you're leaving them in their dust, mate. Yeah, I think that is, that is a big thing. That's the mindset of wanting to be, like you say, the best, wanting to, Met the young lads feel sick in the running sessions. <laughs> that's, that's what it dream. is. You're that's a sicko, a that's what it is. You're a sicko. 50 more games, mate, you're doing it. Gaz Barry, watch out, mate. He's coming. <laughs> He's coming. Right, you ready for this? Oh, that one's so bad. Whoa. It's a rescue. Do you think it's a rescue? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't too bad. It would never stop in the fairway like that. I think you've won that one, mate. Hold on, hold on. Nah, mate, I think we're all square still. All <laughs> square still. Have you got shot every hole there, what? <laughs> I remember, right, Brazil, 2014, yeah? There was a golf day one day. There's a bit of a funny story I remember you telling us about you kind of missed the coach or something like that. No, so, so we, we went for a round of golf and we couldn't quite get the holes in. And I think we're in the middle of the back nine and the hotel was literally there, you could see it. I think you boys played as well and you finished in front of us. Just in front, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me and Jag said, all right, we'll finish these last two off and then we'll, we'll come. So you've gone back and I think the car was gonna come back for us. Me and Jag was like, all right, we'll leave it. I said to the guy, we'll leave the buggies here and then we'll, we'll just walk back. And obviously we've been told you can't really leave the hotel. So we've come out the gate, the gate's shut behind us and we're walking down the street and turn around, there's a group of guys and we're glancing and we're walking a bit quicker and they're walking a bit quicker. Oh. And then they start jogging. So we start running <laughs> and we're like, we're in trouble here. So we're sprinting down, we, we can outrun them. Right, don't Next. lie, don't lie. At this point, are you buzzing you're with Phil Jajalka? Are you buzzing <laughs> that? It's like, unlucky mate, I'm sorry geezer. Jags were sharp though, to be fair. <laughs> Longer distance, I might have been all right. But. So we're running down, next thing, car pulls up next to us. So I'm like, we're getting kidnapped here, it's game over. Door slides open, mid run, it's the boys. They said, like, quick, get in. Jumped in on the move back to the hotel. <laughs> like, Can you imagine? Oh, oh. Mate, that's a chapter in a book, that is. You know that. Yeah. Out of all your time, who's been the best finisher? Yeah, it's the shooting sessions at the team have been out. You think, like, start lead, and you've got Viduka, Alan oh. Smith, Harry Kuehl, Robbie Fowler, Robbie Keane. You go to Newcastle, you've got Alan Shearer, Patrick Cliver. You know, I'm probably missing someone being, being unfair on a few. Maybe then. Sergio Aguero in there somewhere. Aguero, Mo um, Salah. Carlos Tevez, ridiculous, Mo Salah. Talk to me about Carlos Tevez, right? So I played with Carlos Tevez. In training, he didn't seem to be bothered, but put him on a pitch on a Saturday afternoon, different, right? Uh, pff, yeah, incredible. You know, even the, the, the year we won the league the first time, and he was like, he was on a, a beach, playing beach soccer probably for, and, and golf, wasn't he? For, for most of the season, comes back in February bit overweight and just like basically helps us win or basically won us a league just I mean he he did things in games where you need a goal and they'd get a throw in 40 yards from goal turn a guy knock it in from 25 yards and change the game on his own and worked his nuts off and yeah he, he was he, he probably doesn't get talked about enough really yeah I mean when you think of that United team I was there and then he'd gone to City and he was, he was incredible, Carl. Like I say, I think you've got another year or two in you at least, yeah? But I saw a quote from the Liverpool assistant manager a few weeks back, basically saying he could be the assistant manager like tomorrow. Good to go. Is that something you're interested in? Um, I don't know. I think that comment is obviously just as a senior player, you try and help out where you can, don't you? So it's on the field, off the field, communicating yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm doing my badges. So I'm on my A now. Um, so I've done quite a few sessions with the younger guys at the academy, which is good. You know, then 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 sometimes they come up and train with us, so it's good because yeah, you, you know you've seen them and stuff. But when you're doing the session and stuff, I, I enjoy Out on the it. Pitch, and stuff. Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? It's football. You're basically doing it every day in training anyway. You're like helping each other, talking. You see things, what's going on. 
It's hard, isn't it? I mean, football, you see a manager come in, do well, get a new contract for five years and he'll get sacked. Mate, after six, six months. Later. Yeah, I know. And it's like, do you want, do you want that stress? Do you the, want that? The uncertainty of it is crazy, isn't it? I think us as players, right? I've never really thought about that. A, a new manager could come in, bring a goalie coach with him, assistant manager, could have moved from halfway around the country and stuff. Like I say, within six weeks, he could be getting sacked already. Yeah. Them guys go with him as well, don't they? Yeah. It's mad. It's a mad world. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. And I think, for me, you know, any manager needs at least a couple of years, really. He needs to put his ideas, get the players yeah, he wants yeah. in. You, you know, you're changing a culture, really. I, any, any successful team, it, it takes time. But obviously, football's a business and people think you're going down the wrong path. It, it changes so quick. And if it's not going to be football, I see you've set up, um, like, what is it, like a golfing agency, basically. Golf you and agency, Adam, yeah. You and Adam Lallana, yeah? Yeah, we, we, it was, it's probably, what, four or five years ago now. And, um, yeah, it, you know, we, we focus on the performance side. Obviously, it's a different sport, but there's so many things which are the, the, the same, you know, mental side. They have more time to think about it. The golfers wow. in the round and stuff like that. But, you know, you have young golfers in particular who come through a system and then they come into the professional world and it's like, go on then, get on with it. And it's, it's a tough world. It's and not like football. Outside. Well, because football, obviously, you're in a team, you get told what to do every day, training, you get nutritionists, all this, and a golfer, it's like, you're in charge of your own thing. So, yeah, we try to do that. We've got a couple of really good young guys in particular. Um, we've got some established guys on the tour as well and a couple of young guys who played on the um, Walker Cup team. And it's great to, to help them and, and, you know, we talk about things they're thinking and, and, and stuff and we use our experience of me and ads, obviously, what we've gone through and, and stuff. So it, it, it's good. It, it, and, and we've got a guy, Steve McGregor, who was fitness coach at Leeds when I made my debut. And then since then, he's gone on and worked with um, Lee Westwood, Rory McIlroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he, 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 you know, helps these guys with all levels of the performance and stuff, so. Do you remember when you were 16, yeah, and you're just starting out your football career? Is there anybody at Liverpool you can see as sort of, they're doing well, they've got that in them, they've got the abilities and everything else it takes to make it? Um, we had Woody a few years ago, didn't we, who scored at so young, and that was weird because it was against Leeds, so it was a similar yeah, yeah. sort of thing. Alan Smith before me at Leeds scored with his first touch at, at the cop end at, at Liverpool, so that was sort of a weird moment. And then obviously Trent's come in and, and done what he's done. At the moment, we've got a young lad who's Stefan midfielder, done really well coming in a few games. We've got Bobby Clark, who I played with his dad, 18 years between. I came, on the ben came off the bench with Lee Clark at Newcastle. And then this year, I come off the bench with his son. Wow. Um, which doesn't make you feel old at all. so old, um, man. I love it. Yeah, every young lad's different sometimes. And you want these guys to have, be comfortable enough to come in and yeah, play yeah. their best football and, and do it. So um, it, it's massive that, that, that we give them. But Harvey, you forget how young Harvey Elliott is. And, 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 and Fabio Carvalho, you know, like... Just kids still. Still, still young guys, great ability. The, 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 the ability is ridiculous. And, They'll, they'll all be top players, for sure. All right, here we go then. 66 yards, 60 wedge. Oh, I hate this bad boy, by the way. Yeah, why don't you blade it, it through oh. that? Last hole. Last. That was all right. Get in that bush. He's got one of these in his living room at home, by the way. Whoa. Oh, look at the state of this ball. My God. That's good. Go on, get down there. That was unlucky, you know. 87 yards, middle of the fairway. Scumbag. Please be a one pot. You can't be happy. That. I think that's a draw, mate. That's the most disgusting draw in the history of sport. Mate, a draw's a draw, He's lost mate. every hole. A draw's a draw, mate. Right, Millie, you played in a few local derbies, yeah? Are they the ones that like really get the blood pumping, yeah? Yeah, I think they're always great games. Even if things aren't going well that season or you might not be in with a hunt for the league, you know, if it's if it's City United or Liverpool Everton, there's still massive games out there, Newcastle, Sunderland, Leeds United, Leeds United oh, Man United. You played in a few actually, yeah. Villa, Birmingham, managed to score a last minute penalty against uh, Hartie in, in, in that one, that was nice. Went down the middle. Obviously. <laughs> Much to his displeasure. Much, well, it, England, isn't it? So how bad is it whenever you must love it as a keeper taking, being in that against, being against, against England guys who have taken hundreds of penalties against you, practicing for tournaments. Because you can get in the red a little bit more. Well, I, I automatically, you think, he's seen me take so many penalties, he knows where I'm going. I remember this back in the day. You were like, on FPL, you were like a legend because you were taking penos as well, weren't you? Cheap as chips, like four and a half million or something like that. <laughs> Workman-like midfielder, but he took penalties. That was you, all right? But now, what, am I a defender, midfielder, or... Utility you, player, do you, get, do you get, like, clean sheet bonus and all sorts uh, of I think you're a midfielder in the game, aren't you? Right. 
But yeah, yeah, they're, they're always class games. I think um, it's had a couple of nice results, obviously, at Old Trafford a couple of times. One with Liverpool, one with City. Uh, pretty big wins, which were pleasant, shall we say. So, <laughs> uh, they, they were good days, but um, yeah, the, the abuse is always fun. You have a bit of fun with it. I had one... Um, when I, when I was at Leeds and I come through, obviously I was on the 16 and used to, used to warm up on the touchline and people would be shouting things like, does your mum know you're out? Haven't you got homework? Love and this. past your bedtime. We were at, was it Fulham towards the start of the season and went full circle, warming up and someone shouted, Milner, are you not dead yet? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like two minutes, life seems two minutes ago, I was getting, does your mum know you're out? So... You don't mind it, do you? If somebody's like constructive with it or like <laughs> funny or something, witty. Go on, give me, give me a constructive one then. Oh, mate, they, I, I hear everything, mate. Some of the yeah. abuse I get, I'll get about my mum, my dog. I haven't even got a dog. Yeah. And they'll give you stuff about it. They don't care, mate. They'll nah. just say anything, all right? Sometimes it's funny, yeah. Give me your favourite goal of your whole career because you're not exactly known for your goal scoring. You scored a fair few, don't get me wrong. Favourite goal? If I had to say one... Probably my, one at, uh, my first one at Allen Road for Leeds. Yeah. I think, obviously, growing up as a Leeds fan and um, only being 16, scored on Boxing Day a few days before that and then scoring a nice goal, managed to sidestep a World Cup winner and, and put it in the corner. It was, it was a nice goal, but it, it meant a lot, obviously, the first, game, uh, first goal at Ellen Road was massive. Yeah. Biggest character you've ever played with? Ooh. I've just been listening to Mika's book in the car, actually. So Mika's obviously yeah, a great yeah, yeah. lad, unbelievable infectious laugh yeah. you know what you see on tv is what you get <laughs> i think early days was like nick barmby and jason wilcox were hilarious they were like a, a, a duo robo now to be fair joe Hart, we find joe Hart in there? Hearty. Hearty's Hearty's just Hearty's to burn, yeah. isn't he? yeah yeah he was just, i mean i was like always around with you with you guys when i went mate, honorary, honorary member keepers, of a goalies know. union mate yeah. Honest, honestly you were the only one i don't know what that says about me though I don't know what that says about I think it, it says, says you're, I'm crazy like you. No, you're sound, good. you're down to earth, you're like respectful, you're one of the good ones. I think that's yeah. what it says about oh, you, mate. Nice. All I'll right? take that, cheers. You, you said, we said a minute ago, yeah, about the amount of abuse that we get when we're actually playing the game, right? I know you don't do a lot on social media, but how do you deal with it when you do see their messages and like the abuse and all that kind of stuff? If I'm honest, I don't... I'm literally on and off if I post them up. Yeah. I think it is. it can be quite a toxic place, obviously, and there's obviously some amazing stuff on there. You see, you know, the charity stuff and, you know, people like Kevin Sinfield and, and doing things for Rob Burrow and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And that's the thing that's amazing for. But I could do a post doing something stupid, cutting the grass with scissors, for example, yeah. and it'll get, like, millions of views and then you do something about charity or something that you're supporting and it'll get like 14 a few thousand yeah and it's like and that, that's the thing but there is so many good things you could do with it and if it's policed in the right way it can be amazing you for so many good, good things 100 percent, and and can be good fun do you know like you can have great banter on there and, and um, did, like did, so you've without doubt you've seen the boring james milner twitter page right has anybody ever found out who set this page up now, so it was when we were on pre-season when I was at City and um, I think there was a boring, boring Gareth Barry one for a yeah. few weeks as well. And I think it had to be someone around the, the squad like Vinny or something like that. That's what it was originally, or Mika. What, one of the players? That's what we thought originally because it was like, oh, boring, blah, blah, blah. And then it appeared. And like the lads were on it early when it didn't have that many followers. It probably had a few thousand yeah, at yeah. that point. And then Meeks contacted him to try to find who it was. And then this guy started, whoever it is, guy, girl, whoever... Um, started following Mika, but never said who it was. Never and explained it. They've done all right, haven't they? I mean, yeah, you know, it's a bit of fun, isn't it, if people find it funny. And if it's not golf, anything else? Um, Actually, I do know you like cricket, because I remember being at the Brazil World Cup and you and Hartie were down the hallways every single yeah. day, bowling balls down the hallway. Yeah. In fact, remember we had the um, treatment room? Yeah. And we had a room and we had these uh, slider doors <laughs> and they were shut, like, literally like that. They and we used uh, the Jenga for the stumps and it was about that high. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? And what were we using a snooker cue or something as a bat? Yeah, yeah. And we were bowling it, Hartie was steaming in and Hartie's walloped one with a snooker cue, and it's gone through this gap in the door like that into the treatment room full, and I think it was small his head by about that, and this ball just whistled through this gap, and we're just like this, waiting for someone to... This is Hartie all over. I remember watching him do this for about two and a half hours, right? Yeah, he was sweating yes, so yeah, much, yeah, yeah. he's doing it in just his slips, his pants. <laughs> yeah. He's just got his pants on, just running and giving it one... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ridiculous, what yeah, a guy. Yeah. Right, Jiminy, time for a test of strength, yeah? You ready for this? 
You should do me on this, shouldn't you? Look at size here. Yeah, but it's not all about the size of it, all right? It's the motion in the ocean, all that kind all of right, stuff. All right, nice. Okay. Yeah. You get eight drives, four minutes to hit your eight drives. The only problem I've got, I've got to keep it in that grid. <laughs> you see that grid? I've got to keep it in that grid, and I just go. <laughs> you first, then, mate. Go on. Honor's all yours. <laughs> Woohoo! 265 yards. Come on. <laughs> That's not bad. That's just gone 310 yards. Say, do you know what I was about to say? It looks to me like you've lost your powers a little bit, you're getting older. And I was going to ask you the question of, what have you done to adapt your game as a footballer as you've gotten older? But you've absolutely creamed on 300 yards. <laughs> Whoa, I hurts think my ears. Playing different positions, you know, it makes you a better player and appreciates your teammates a bit. Do you think you take just a little bit more of a leadership role? Yeah, I think, to be fair, I've tried to do that for quite a while, though, because... <laughs> oh, no. Um, this. He's doing this mid-conversation as well. Because, sure I, you enough. know, I was fortunate to start at 16. You know, what, no, what normally becomes an experienced player, like, what, 20, 20, 28 or something. Like, by the time I was 24, I'd already played eight years in the Premier League. Yeah. So, I'm fortunate at that point that you feel like an established player. I've gone to City and seen, like, the big characters there. You've got some like Vinnie Company and Patrick Vieira. Even at City... I saw, I've seen a few of the, the, like the footage and stuff like that. And Fabian Dauf came across as a genuine leader in the changing rooms, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is incredible, really, because you'd think it would be the big boys. You'd think of the Agueros or the companies or the Yaya Torre, all those kind of guys. But he felt, yeah, he felt respected enough to be able to be that guy as well. I think the dressing room was full of big personalities, but I think you have to stand up to that, but you have to contribute. Um, oh, um, and I think set players setting good examples. You know, Vinny was a great captain. Um, I just beat her. He's just beat. He's got 320. I've got time for one more. Oh, I, left. I think you've got two more. Yeah, good luck beating oh. him. I, that's the, see, I get him talking. I got him talking. We killed two clever, of his shots. Clever, clever. <laughs> Oh, I love this. I've got 320 yards. You just hit a 320 yard drive though, mate. It's all I know, right. I felt like I had one more on me, but it's all right. All right, let's see what we got then, yeah? I've got Number a left. left. I've got a wing <laughs> so left, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got your golf shoes on now. Your clubs. Oh, no, no. Okay, fully prepared. How busy is that? It's ridiculous. My clubs. My get, gloves. Get your legs into it. Hips. Hips don't lie. <laughs> That's gone away. I don't know if I've got anything more than that. In your opinion, yeah, because this is the way I see it, the leaders are always the people at the back, goalkeepers, defenders. Then once you get a little bit further up, it's like, I'm just focusing on the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. I think you don't see many forwards like that, do you, I suppose, because, you know, they're normally the best players and the goal scorers. And, you know, the best ones are selfish, aren't they? They need that selfishness in them to score the goals. I'm not going to pass it. Like, I don't think you can be the best player in the world and score 600, 700, 800 goals without being selfish. I don't, I don't think it's possible. Oh, that was horrible. And you, and you need those players, don't you? They're, they're amazing players, but it, that's the most important thing to them, scoring. I'm going to be the one who scores today. You know, England, Stevie, very different. Um, sort of captain, didn't sh shout too much, like, led by example, but when he spoke, everyone listened. Can I hit Happy Gilmore one of these, by the way? 15 seconds. You've never taken this poor shot. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, get one off. Told you I'm sweating. Don't fall off. You're going to hit the wall. Careful, move right. Ah, oh, time is going to be up. Ah, oh, sorry, Ben. Ask that question again. <sighs> 2.95 is a good effort, though, bless you. It's fine, I don't mind. Um, <laughs> Favourite captain you've ever played for? That's too difficult. Uh, Don Matteo was my first, like, absolute warrior. Some of the stories he told about you know, when he was at Liverpool and the, the team bonding, they had to go out for a day and a half drinking, training bin bags the next day. <laughs> like sweat it out. Yeah, he'd tell you stuff like, you know, like stories, listening to him. And then like, he'd be like cutting holes in his boots to get out. He'd probably have a grade two hamstring and he'd just get on with it. And just like, unbelievable, you know, like do anything for the team, play yeah. in any position. You look at someone like Vinny or, or Hendo and like, Again, team comes first. Anything they can do for the, for the staff, for the team, what can be better. You know, attention to detail. Every little thing matters. Both of those guys really yeah. like 
doesn't happen overnight. It's every little detail to its training, it's, it's the culture, it's the players having good relationships. It, are people turning up on time? Is everyone in the gym? I, like, I read something when um, Jurgen Klopp first came to Liverpool. He had a big old team meeting, but I mean everybody within the changing rooms, training, training ground, everything, and was like, guys, see all these people around here, the canteen staff, the, the dinner ladies, the office staff, learn their name because you need to know these people. You need to get to know them because you're going to see them every single day. So when you see them, say hello, shake their hand in the morning. Is that, is that how it went? It's sim similar, yeah. I think we had a meeting and he walked, he'd, he'd met everyone and he walked every single member of staff through the meeting room, yeah. in, through and out. And he said, look at how many people we've got here to help us be successful was the basic gist yeah, of it yeah. and everything here the training ground all these They're people are here for, for us to be successful and you know you know the the, the 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 staff and like we said before how lucky we are for the amount of people we have to look after us from the kit men you know the the, the kitchen staff the chefs we travel with yeah a lot of behind the scenes people don't oh, say isn't so it you know what yeah. would, and they're normally then they're the club and you know when you play for a football club you know liverpool incredible football club like I'm fortunate to be there, I'm fortunate to wear the number sh seven shirt, but ultimately, you're there for a short period of time. The club was there long, long before I was there. It'll be there long after me. What can you do to you know, make the club proud, represent the club in the time you're there? But it's the clubs, the people who've been there and, and the fans, that's what the, 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 the heartbeat of the club is. You won the luck. Going into the darts, all right? But I've got to get my excuse in the early doors. These are cheap darts, right? They're like lightweight, aren't they? No I, tungsten. I haven't brought my own, though, have I? They're the same ones. Um, right, anyway, mate. So, <laughs> right, mate, here we go. I'm 1 0 down, 5 0 1. Oh. oh. I'll take that. Block up. Oh, lipstick. Oh, lipstick again. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> It's the biggest sports billy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> First time, 140. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> I'm supposed to be asking you questions and shit. I'm just fuming now. <laughs> look how angry he's got. I love it. I'm out of the keeper's union. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm out of the keeper's union. Mate, it's solid darts, uh, 60. Right, mate, I was going to ask you some Liverpool questions like later on in the leg, but you've already scored 200 points in your first six starts, so I've got to ask them now, OK? Been a tricky start to the season, but second half, what are you expected? Yeah, improvement, hopefully. Obviously, it hasn't been the start we'd want. It's been tough at times, but hopefully we can get a few injuries back in, in the World Cup break. That'd be nice. You know, a couple of good performances before the break and, and finish strong, hopefully take us into the break with a bit of momentum and, and come out all, uh, firing all. All guns blazing. Talk to me about Darwin Nunes. Do I need to get him in to my fancy Premier League team for the second half of the season or not? Yeah, I think so, 100%. I think he's got everything to score a lot of goals at Liverpool. He's obviously a new country, can't speak too much English yet, but he's a great lad. Some of the banter he's having and he's learning English. So I think people underestimate how difficult that is. Yeah, it's the same sport football, but you're moving your whole family. Like You don't understand the language. Yeah. It's different food, different weather. Uh, Premier League is completely different. It is a big step and it can take time, but his attributes he has, finishing both feet um, in the air, works his nuts off. Yeah, he'll, he'll be top, no uh, doubt about that. Take that one off. Stop talking when I'm proud. <laughs> there we go. Here he is. <laughs> Here we go. We've got the arm working. Oh, I'll tell you what. <sighs> yeah, right, right, come on, the comeback's on. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Everyone loves a little naughty tops. Everyone loves two little naughty tops. <laughs> Are you happy about that? <laughs> yeah, 85. Do you want to re-record re that? I don't care, 85, come on. 246, I'm on 246, you're on 265. Here we go. Oh, keep sliding. <laughs> what are you looking at? You, don't, you can't look at me while I'm about to play my shot. Well, I can't speak, I can't look at it. Would you just shut my eyes? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Face the wall. <laughs> oh. Oh. That is so unlucky. That is so unlucky. It's like that. <laughs> it's desolating this. Ugliest win of all time. Oh. oh. Find a way. Oh, Find a way! As well. Got it as well. Well done, mate. I'm happy for you. I'm really, really happy for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dickheads. 
Um, well done, mate. Thanks, pal. Um, Millie the Sports Billy. Cheers, pal. Uh, thanks for talking to me and thanks for beating me. And don't forget, you can watch the return of the Premier League from Boxing Day exclusively on Amazon <laughs> Prime Video. <laughs> I still nearly said Amazon Pro. And don't forget, you can watch the return of the Premier League from Boxing Day on Prime Video.